Hi, and welcome back to the Taco Share YouTube channel. I'm Alicia, and I'm gonna show you in this video today how easy it is to make your very own DIY bump board. All the materials I have here, I already kind of had at home other than the sticker. So I wanna show you how you can make your very own very simple and easy DIY bump board. All right, so the basic materials that you're gonna be needing to make your very easy bump board are, I have collected two of these peel and stick um, rulers. This one is 36 inches. So that is going to be the full extent of what I can measure with my bump board. I made sure that I've collected a, a board. I did a, it's a pine board that you can get at any hardware store. This one I've actually repurposed from a job I had here at home. Um, but I made sure that it was at least four to six inches longer than the tape that I have. And you can see I have a little bit of wiggle room there for um, making my cuts. Of course, I'm also going to want to have some Verithane. This is a water-based indoor-outdoor uh, Verithane that I use for a lot of different odd jobs. I like it. It works very well. So that's what I'm going to be using on my bump board to make sure it's got a nice seal on the wood to prevent it from warping in the future, as well as it's also going to help um, create a smooth surface for that sticker to adhere to. I've also collected a hinge that I've repurposed yet again from another job around my house and some fasteners that I'm going to be using. In addition, those are the those are the basic materials you need for actually for your bump board. There's of course some tools you're going to need to collect your own, like a drill bit, some glue, measuring tape, paintbrush, those types of things. So I've already said that I went ahead and I gave this a really nice good sand. I wanted to get a nice smooth surface so that when I put that Verithane on, it's going to fill all those cracks and have no voids so that my sticker will adhere to it once it's dry. Now this is going to take a couple stages, so I'm going to start um, putting my first couple coats on now. Now we're into day two of this project. I went through and actually did a total of three layers of varnish on my board just to make sure it had a nice slick surface. I sanded in between to make sure it was as smooth as possible to move on to our next step. All right, so now we have, um, I also have the measuring tape or the, the tape that I'm going to be using as my ruler on it. And um, because the width of it was actually wider than the board, I just went ahead and trimmed it down to exactly the parts that I'm going to need. I'm just gonna remove the extra bit there. So I'm down to these two rulers that I have. So next, um, I'm going to measure out how long I want each of my pieces to be. I'm going to be cutting three different sections of my board. Um, the first, I have already gone ahead and done it, but I want to show you how I decided what length. Um, I started, I put my tape right here at the edge. There's, of course, a little extra um, that I'm going to be cutting off because I want the edge of that board to line right up with zero. And it's going to drag on to just about, I made it about a you know, quarter inch longer than half. And then I made um, a mark with my pencil. And then I came across here and then went all the way down to the end of the board at 36 inches and cut right there. And then at the very, very end, I determined I wanted about a three and a half inch extra piece, which is what I did there, um, to cut up from the front. So essentially, once you've gone ahead and cut those pieces, I have the part that you're going to attach here at the front to the nose of your board there. And then, of course, we have the section here in the middle where we're going to be putting our hinge. And once we fasten that, that board is gonna come back over and lie on top of it nicely, just like this. And you'll notice that because I made it a little bit longer, it's never gonna have a problem. It's always gonna bypass there, it's never gonna have a problem. If you made the boards completely identical in length, as you go to move here, you're always gonna have some interference with this front board. So I made sure I made it a smidge bit uh, shorter and I might have actually made it a lot shorter but I did not want it to be bumping onto the front board there where I'm putting the snout of my fish. Alright so now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to um, attach the front of the board first just to make it easier while I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to glue it and I'm going to screw it as well. I'm going to drill some pilot holes so I'm just going to do that right now. Now you can see I've gone ahead and drilled my pilot holes so that they line up and that way when I go to put my wood screws in they're not going to split the wood. In this case I'm also choosing to do a countersink as well. All right now I've pre put my screws in it. I'm also going to go ahead and put some wood glue on to make sure it stays firmly in place. And there we go, just like that. And then of course, I'm gonna go ahead and scrape off that extra glue. 
So now for aligning up your board, you want to make sure that it is as straight as possible. Um, and I'd highly suggest using a straight edge <laughs> to do that because the littlest little twist in the board when it goes to be folded back can really end up being quite off and you don't want it to not match up. You want it to be as straight as possible. So to do that, I'm just going to use my straight edge that's right here beside me. So match the boards up like so. And I know that I'm gonna need about, you know, an eighth of an inch or more to account for the space that's going to uh, facilitate the moving of my hinge. So it's about the actual width of the pin from the middle of your hinge there. And I'm gonna line that up against the side of my board and just gonna go ahead and screw this together. Now you wanna make sure that your hinge is the right way. Last thing you wanna do is put it the opposite way because then when you go to close it, it sometimes they don't go all the way. So you wanna make sure you've got it the correct direction. I'm gonna go ahead and screw it in here. There we go. And there we have the general shape of your bump board, collapsible like that. And all we have to do is stick on our stickers. Now I've made two of them, of course. I'm going to adhere it so that, of course I'm gonna make sure that I'm cutting off the very first bit here, I'm gonna make sure I cut right along that line there so I can put that right up against the board right here. And then it's going to be stuck across the board. And then I'm gonna go in and cookie cutter out the part that I don't need. Or maybe I'll move it up a bit here. Put it right along there. So I can cut out and trim out the extra bit that I don't need. And because I've got this nice, real shellac surface, it's gonna stick very well. And if it doesn't, that's not a problem. I will just go ahead and use some glue to adhere it as well. All the way from end to end, I've got my very own bump board and I'm gonna close it up. And of course, there's another surface. Not all my fish are gonna be above 18 inches. So I'm going to go ahead and use my extra sticker that I got um, and I'm gonna stick it on the outside here. So I have one uh, for that as well. Now my sticker was folded a little bit in storage so I may have to go through and put some extra sticky adhesive on it for them. And then of course, at the very end, because I had that room for the board to come out um, and move, I'm of course now just gonna go ahead and cut that little excess off there as well. And there we go. All right, and there we go. I finished my very first bump board I've ever made. Um, I did uh, go through and because I made those cuts, of course I have now have some raw wood on several of the end pieces of the wood. I'm gonna go ahead and throw some more uh, Varathane on it just to make sure I've got a good seal and prevent it from warping and ensure the longevity of my bump board. I'm also, uh, because I do notice that the sticker's not sticking overly well uh, in certain spots where it was folded because I had it in um, an envelope, I'm gonna go ahead and, you know, just do a whole coat over the whole thing to help it stick down, make sure I've got the life that I wanna get out of my bump board. All right, and that's it. Everything you need to make your very first DIY bump board. I am not claiming to be any sort of professional, but it does the trick. That's exactly what we were going for. So if you like this video, make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and tap that notification bell to keep more fishing content coming your way. See you next time.